My Lords, I'm excited about the commitment contained in the gracious speech to tackling the barriers to opportunity and to laying the foundations for educational excellence in all schools, giving every child the best start in life, communicating the message that it's possible to be young, gifted and disabled is fundamental to my mind to building a one nation society in which disability discrimination is consigned to history. That doesn't mean tokenistic excellence just for disabled pupils and students. It does mean expecting and demanding more of them so that intellectually talented disabled children are singled out, encouraged and supported to excel. As the Prime Minister said in his inspiring speech on life chances in January, it means a new way of thinking. Surely, as the government seeks to halve the disability employment gap, a worthy goal, building employers' confidence in disabled people means ensuring they know that when they want to recruit the best, they can be confident that talented disabled job applicants are more than equal to the challenge. So for me, a one nation society is one that doesn't discriminate on account of disability, a society in which disability equality is a consistent reality. It is my commitment to disability equality and my appreciation of your Lordship's House remarkable record in advancing disability equality, which has informed my introduction of the Private Members Bill on the issue. It concerns an area where, unbelievably, the diagnosis of disability carries a death sentence. Partly because of your Lordship's House, discrimination on the grounds of disability after birth is outlawed. Yet today, legal and lethal discrimination on the grounds of disability is allowed up to birth by law. It is illegal for an unborn human being to have their life ended by abortion beyond 24 weeks. But if they have a disability, their life can be ended right up to birth by law. I have to ask, my lords, where is the consistency, the justice, or the equality in that? And if anyone thinks such obvious discrimination is acceptable, I would respectfully invite them to imagine the outcry if the same were applied to skin colour or sexual orientation. Such discrimination would quite rightly be regarded as outrageous. My Lords, to be a member of your Lordship's House is to be a peer and equal. And yet, for as long as this discrimination is allowed by law and remains on the statute book, how can I, as a severely disabled person, reasonably be expected to regard myself as an equal? My Lords, I believe the recent excellent report 
on the Equality Act 2010 and disability produced by an ad hoc select committee of your Lordship's House shows that this House is equal to the challenge. It is equal to the noble task of righting this wrong, of advancing disability equality once more, and of building one nation in which disability discrimination is consigned to history. For surely, if life chances are to have meaning, if every child is to have the best start in life, as the Prime Minister quite rightly wishes, disabled children must firstly be given an equal chance to live.